anything out of it that we needed to get out of it. It says some scriptures, all. how much scripture? All. all scriptures God inspired, and we said that inspired means breathe. All scriptures God breathed and useful for teaching. How I many know that if we're going to teach, it should be the word of God? Yes. Yes. It's not a suggestion that we use the word. It is a command that scripture is for teaching. Yes. And people are not teaching scripture anymore. They're teaching a whole lot of stuff. But I can't deal with that. Teaching. Say teaching. teaching. For reproof. We dealt with reproof last week. People don't want to be rebuked. They want to be great, but they don't want to be dealt with. In order to be great, somebody got to put their hands on you. Somebody got to get in your stuff. Watch out for people, even your children, when they don't like to be corrected. The Bible says that a wise man will receive correction and get better, but a fool will hear correction and get his heart affected and he'll be worse off. So the word is for reproof. I like the next word. What does your Bible say? Correction. Mine say for restoration. For reproof, for restoration. What is this saying to us? It means that some stuff is not going to be restored until you get the proper relationship with the word. Wow. That's good. Some people are praying for restoration and I command the devil to give it back sevenfold and the enemy got to return. Some things are not going to be restored until you get the right relationship with the word. So you can pray until your knees become callous, but if you don't get a right relationship with the word, you'll never get restoration. So let me read it how it goes thus far. All scriptures God inspired and useful for teaching, for reproof, for restoration, for training in righteousness, for training in righteousness. Say that with me. Say for training, for training. in righteousness. In righteousness. There is no righteousness if we're not trained for it. How many know righteousness does not just happen by osmosis, but righteousness has to come from the word of God. And so many times we're going through the motions, but we're not being trained in righteousness or trained how to live a righteous life. And, and quite frankly, most people don't want to be trained how to live a righteous life. Because a righteous life means that my life is set apart and I become me for the master's use. And that's going to take me living by what I hear. So most people rather turn a deaf ear to truth because they know that the knowledge that I have I'm going to be held accountable for it. And so if the word of God is profitable for teaching, for correction, for restoration, it is also necessary for my righteousness. A lot of people don't live righteous because they don't know what the book says. Amen. Some people hear what it says, but never get into it to apply it for themselves so they never have a relationship with the word. Let me, let me just... Go here for a minute. How many ever said, I, I want to know Jesus more? I want more of Jesus. Anybody yeah. ever say yeah. that? Some people have even said, Jesus, I want to see you. Right? You, you have as much of Jesus as you have of his word. Mm, that's good. I know we don't like to hear this. To the level that you apply and you search out and you understand the word of God, the scriptures. Let's just say scriptures. Because that's a lot of stuff going around saying it's the word. So to the degree that I am acquainted with the word of God determines the level of acquaintance that I have with Jesus. So we pray bogus prayers. I want more of God. I want more of Jesus. And the truth of the matter is you have as much of him as you want or as little of him as you want because if I want more of him I'm going to have to have more of his word exactly. That's it. and so it's not going to happen by my prayer God I want more of you he said well you have me but to the level that you're willing to apply me to your life and to receive me in your life determines the level of me that you walk with yes. okay let me keep reading this in righteousness, training in righteousness. We don't train people, Brother Marlon, in righteousness anymore. We train people how to get stuff, and we give them five points to a better life, and the church has become a motivational center where we motivate people. But we never challenge people to let this word, all scripture, begin to train their mind for righteousness. Righteousness does not just fall out of the sky because we come to church. Being righteous is intentional. Yes. 
and I'm intentional about my relationship with the Lord based on how much time I spend in this word, how much time I spend in his presence, how much time I spend in his house with his people. Yes. If I have a disdain for God's people, I have a disdain for God. Yes. And if I don't have an appreciation for the word of God, I don't have an appreciation for God. You have never seen Jesus, but you have seen his book. And he said, behold, I come in the volume of a book. It is written of me. So if you want him, you want the book. Yes. And you want not only to hear the book, but you want to apply the book. Okay. 17. So that the man of God or the person of God would be able to meet all the demands since he has been equipped perfectly for every good work. You can't meet all the demands that are being put on your life if you don't have the right relationship with the Word. He's saying so that the man of God would be able to meet all demands. Say all. Oh. Since he has been equipped perfectly for every good work. How do you become equipped perfectly through the Word of God? Because righteousness is learned through the Word. How many want to meet every demand? Now, I'm not talking about every little demand people put on you. I'm talking about every demand God has for your life and every demand that the kingdom is putting on you. Sometimes we're trying to meet the demands of people and we're missing God's demand. You cannot be all things to all people. Some people are losing their own identity trying to make everybody happy. You cannot make everybody happy. You're not supposed to make people happy. You're supposed to do what you're supposed to do. Yes. Nothing more, nothing less. Amen. Now we went to Romans chapter 1, verses 16 to 17. You don't have to turn there. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein, or in it, the righteousness of God is revealed. Now, that's a whole lot, but I don't know what we do with that when we unpackage that. He said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power, the dunamis, the explosive ability of God unto salvation, soteria, to everyone that believes. He said, but not only is the gospel powerful, but he said, therein... Or in it, it's the power for righteousness. We, we can't have righteousness apart from the word. Right. He said therein is the righteousness. What, where is it at? In the word. Yes. And you see that society is trying to pull us far and far away from the word yes. and make us do things that are politically correct and acceptable to men. And see, this is a fool to me. It don't take all that. You, you, I'm about five seconds away from giving you the highest smack. You're a fool. See, you, you can't tolerate people that will not challenge your dysfunction. You, you cannot... Oh, Lord. We, we want people around us, and I hear people put people around you to make you happy, and that, you know, put people around that you can kick it with. No, I don't want people around me to make me happy. I want people around me to make me better. And if I'm going to walk out the righteousness of God, somebody's going to have to challenge my life and, and put my life up against the word of God and make sure that my life is exemplifying the word. But we get comfortable with people that tolerate our dysfunction. And you will never be great hanging around people that never challenge your dysfunctions. Watch out for people that's okay with who you are. And never challenge you to become who you're supposed to be. That is not a friend. That's a friend of me. That is an enemy disguised as a friend because a friend will tell you the truth. Open rebuke is better than secret love. I'd rather be rebuked by a friend than kissed by a Judas. And many times we want people around us. Yeah, we want people around us that celebrate us, but we want people around us that will tell us the truth. You know what? If you ever worked out with a personal trainer, a coach, if you ever played any kind of sport, they're not there to make you feel good. You don't feel good when you're running three miles. You don't feel good when you're doing 100 sit-ups, 100 push-ups. They're they not trying to make you feel good. They're trying to make you better. Yeah. 
And we understand that concept in the natural, but we don't understand it in the spirit. Oh, that's a hard word. Why they got to go there? Why you got to touch my music? Why? Because we're trying to make you better. Yeah. Trying to challenge you to be everything God has called you to be and not just tolerate your dysfunction so you can just keep going through life existing and never living. That's good. That's good. So he said therein or in it, the word of God, the right